welcome back to Rustic and Lace DIY. Not only do I have a fun collaboration for you today, but it's my birthday and Oliver had to celebrate with me, although he's not very happy about this. But first of all, I'm so glad you are all here with me today. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Brenda. This is my sweet Oliver, who's so patient with me. And if you're returning, you know we love you. So with all that being said, let's get to crafting. Okay, here's DIY number one. So for this DIY, I'm going to use one of these glass cylinder vases you get from Dollar Tree. I'm going to use my essential stencils, rub-on transfers, these vintage birds. I absolutely love these. If you guys, have, I'm sure you've seen what I used them with before. I just love them. Anyways, I'm going to start off by, I cleaned that vase very well, and then I'm just rubbing it down with some alcohol. Then I took the decal that I wanted to use, or the ribbon transfer, and I'm just going to lay it across this vase. And then I'm just going to rub. And you guys, these come off so nice. I really was impressed of how easily it was coming off. In fact, <laughs> there was a couple of times where I accidentally laid it down uh, like there was a bird that I did and it didn't lay down flat and I went to go try to lift it up and it was already sticking. So they really work wonderfully and I just love using these. Um, so there I did the cherry blossoms on one side and then this one had a bird on a branch. It didn't have much cherry blossoms, but I went and cut out a couple cherry blossoms and added to that. I added another bird to this one and then I did um, end up using, uh, I think I ended only used one butterfly, um, but these have some butterflies that are really pretty on them as well. And there I am adding the butterfly. And um, again, I'm just rubbing and then lifting. And when I lifted a couple times, I could tell it was lifting a little bit of the transfer. So I just placed that sheet back down, rubbed a little bit more, and then it was perfect. Once I was all done, I decided to go over it with some Mod Podge. So I'm just taking my Mod Podge here and I'm just brushing it all over my transfers. And then I took my finger and I am just going into swirls with that Mod Podge. Now I saw Brandy with the DIY struggle. She did this recently and it just gives it a better look once it dries because it does dry clear but it, it has a little bit of a translucent uh, look to it and I didn't want it to have that brush brush stroke mark so this I thought would be perfect because then it gave just a little nicer texture and there it is I filled it up with some flowers that I got off of Amazon a couple years ago and I think this is just beautiful you have to let me know what you think about this as well you know what would be really pretty is if you put some uh, little fairy lights in there too oh it'd be gorgeous but here I'm just going to turn it around there so that you can see the other side with the birds and the butterfly and yeah I just love it you have to let me know what you think about this one in the comment box below Okay, so today is the She Made What <laughs> challenge. And in this challenge, we all had to use glass and see what we could come up with. And there's not a really a host, it's just all of us women participating. So make sure you check out everyone's videos and channels and subscribe to them if you haven't already. I will have links to the playlist in my description box below for you to check out. Okay, here's DIY number two. Now you guys, I have to tell you, I really struggled. Um, I'm going to use this vase I had used before in a DIY and I took it apart and then I'm going to use some of this Bonnie craft cord macrame cord that's four millimeters. So um, as I said before here I'm just measuring the size that I need but as I said before I really struggled I was having the roughest time and so my DIYs are not like they would normally be but I did kind of do some things that were a little different for my style and my taste and this is one of them this is more of a boho and I'm not really into boho um, but I just thought this would be a fun project to do because I did see this on Pinterest so I cut out about 30 of those strips of the macrame cord and then as you can see I'm just folding them in half and I'm hot gluing that folded part to the bottom part of my vase and I'm just going to do this all the way around now 
if you recreate this, I would suggest using a bigger macrame cord, like maybe an eight or 10 millimeter. Um, because when I start doing the designs on this, I realized, you know what, this is not covering like I should. And I think it's because my macrame cord was too small. So once I had them all hot glued there, I took three strands and I am just braiding them just like you see here. And I'm just gonna braid them all the way down until um, this vase has like a, it goes inward, so it's more narrow, and then it comes out. So at that narrow point is where I'm going to glue the ends of my uh, macrame cord here. And I'm just gluing that down like you can see, and then I'm letting the rest hang. After that, I took three more strands that were on this side of that braid and I'm just going to hot glue them down just like you see me doing right there. Then I went and took three more strands and did another braid. And then once I have that all braided, I'm gonna hot glue that one as well. And this is about the point where I'm like, okay, there's too much of a gap between these. So I took some more cord and I um, hot glued just a piece to the back bottom there and then I'm just going to bring that down so I ended up having four single strands in between each braid um, no sorry not four I had five so I ended up having to add two extra strands um, between each braid and that's what I'm doing here I'm just adding another strand and then I just hot glue it especially because I didn't want you to see the half painted, half not vase there. <laughs> so once I had it all done, I flipped it over and I took some rope and I'm just uh, gonna hot glue this rope right around that uh, little neck area of the vase. Then I took one of Oliver's brushes <laughs> and I just started brushing this. You can use a comb as well, I believe, but I just started brushing and brushing and brushing. I first tried doing it with my fingers, but you know what, it was taking forever. So I just took the brush and then I turned it over here and then I'm brushing the top part just so that you get that real fuzz effect there. And after I had it all fuzzed out then I gave it a little haircut because it wasn't very even you could probably might have been better to actually trim all those pieces um, before I started brushing it but I wasn't quite sure how it was gonna look so I waited until the end then after that I took three more strands and I'm just braiding it here and I had it taped to my uh, desk here with some painters tape and uh, then I am just going to hot glue this around and I, I just hot glued in different sections. I didn't hot glue the whole thing around. But once I got to the end, I'm just gonna trim off um, the extra there. Hot glue that piece, the end piece on top of the other end piece and then trim off the excess of that one as well. And I really like how this came out. It's totally not my style though, but I do like the way it came out. So anyways, I took some twine here and I just wrap, wrapped it around above that braid and I'm just making a bow. Then I'm gonna add, I did add a little tape to the end of my string so that I could string on some beads. And on one, I st strung on six beads. And then on the other one, I strung on five beads. And that's only because there was only 11 beads on that strand and I didn't wanna get up and go find another bead that size. <laughs> so here I'm just made, I think I made a triple knot just to keep uh, those beads on so, because this was a pretty fine uh, twine. So I wanted to make sure those beads didn't fall off. And there it is. Y'all have to let me know what you think about it. I think it's really cool. I just added some uh, lamb's ear to it, but I do think it looks really cool. And I think it would have looked better if I had wider uh, cord, but it is what it is. You have to let me know what you think about this one as well. So I just want to stop for a moment and thank all my wonderful subscribers. You guys mean the world to me. And if you are new here and enjoy today's video, please hit that subscribe button before you go. It doesn't cost you anything and it means the world to me. And then make sure you guys give me that thumbs up, comment and watch those ad that really helps support my channel and helps get my videos pushed out there a little bit more. And then if you'd like to follow me on social media, you can do that by finding the links in my description box below. <laughs> okay, here's DIY number three. 
Okay, so for this DIY, I'm going to use this face from Dollar Tree, some Mod Podge, and then some of these fabric flowers from Hobby Lobby. Now, this really you're supposed to use pressed flowers, but I didn't have any pressed flowers, and I thought I'd find some at Hobby Lobby, and this was the closest that I could find. So I had to really work with it. I finally got it to work though. But I'm going to start off by just brushing on some Mod Podge and then laying those flowers. Now this flower gave me probably the most difficulty. Um, I am just trying to get it to stick onto that Mod Podge, but the material on it was a little thicker and it had layers. And so it just was not wanting to stick. So I kept putting Mod Podge on the top of it and holding it down until I could get it to stick. These flowers were a little bit better. They worked a little bit easier. Uh, I'm just pressing them down and then adding the Mod Podge on top. And then these had these were a little more like a paper. So even paper flowers might work better than the fabric. Um, but I just put this leaf down and it, it laid down really nicely. This was really easy. So I'm really thinking if you have a thinner paper kind of flower that it would work much better if you don't have any pressed flowers. And if you don't have pressed flowers, but you have flowers that you can press, you can do that as well. So here I'm just doing that uh, technique uh, with the swirling of the Mod Podge as well. And then I just continued to add some flowers here and there. I had some more leaves that I added here and there until I had this completed all the way around my vase. And I'm just going to show you a few more minutes of this and then we will move right along <laughs> but here I'm just going to swirl again um yeah and then add some more flowers okay <sighs> I don't know why you have to see all this but anyways <laughs> once it was all dry I set it aside and let it dry and then then this is the uh, next morning I think which was this morning I came in and I decided I wanted to wrap some twine around it. So I just took some jute twine, wrapping it around the top part of the vase, and then I'm going to make a little bow. And um, that's all I am going to do to this. This I think is really pretty too. I do really love the way this came out, even though it gave me some difficulties. Um, I do love the way this came out and I just put a little candle in there but put um, maybe some fairy lights in there would be really pretty too but see the swirling effect see how it just kind of gives that look I just love it you'll have to let me know what you think about this one as well okay so it is a time for a celebration of your recreation and Candace sent me this. She got that farmhouse sign from Timu. And I love what you did with it, Candace. It turned out so pretty. Thank you so much. And then Karen, she's been busy. Look at all these wonderful things that she made. I love your little shells that you made. They're awesome. Thank you, Karen. And if you have a creation or recreation that you would like me to showcase for you, you can send pictures to my email address that's listed there, or you can send them to me through Facebook Messenger or Instagram. And I am always Always more than happy to showcase them for, for you <laughs> okay here's DIY number four here's another one that's not really my style but I do really like it so I'm gonna use this mango jar that I got from Sam's Club last summer I'm gonna use some of these beads I have no idea what size they are I got them from Amazon with a pack of different sizes and then some twine so I'm just going to start off, I cut down some twine to the sizes I thought I would need, and then I'm just going to string on 12 of these beads on each strand of twine, and I have eight strands all together. So after I have them all, uh, one, one ran away on me, uh, on there, then I'm just going to take my jar, I'm going to put a little hot glue on the inside of the top part I'm going to glue that end of my strand to it and then I pushed my beads up and then I'm going to glue it here I'm trying to make sure it's straight <laughs> trying to get it as straight as I can um, I'm going to hot glue it to the bottom part of my jar and then I'm going to go and I'm going to do the next one straight across from it I thought it might be easier for me to get it uh, even if I did it this way. After I got this one hot glued on, then I went on the sides and I did one on the ones on the right and then I did one on the left. And then I went 
in between. To me, I felt like that was the best way to make sure that they were on there evenly. So after I have all of these done, which will be here in just a moment, oh, there's doing my last one here. I am going to trim off the bottom. Now, if you wanted to use colored beads, you could definitely use colored beads as well. Um, you, there's a lot that you could really do with this. After I was done with all those beads being added on, I took some more twine here and I'm just gonna wrap the top part of my jar just to help kind of cover all those areas that, um, all those little pieces of twine that I glued on to hold those beads in place. And I am just gonna go around. And then at some point when it was getting close to the top, you could see it was kind of starting to fall. So I just took my hot glue and just kind of hot glued it uh, to the top so that way it would stay and not fall off. And that's all there was on that one. And then I took the lid and I am going to add my twine to the lid. So I just add a little dot of hot glue and then I'm just gonna start wrapping this twine in a circle. And I wrapped it, I don't know, five or six times before I needed to start gluing it. As it was getting bigger, then it just needed to be glued, I guess. I was hoping I could do this the whole time and not have to glue it, but no, it, it started coming apart. So I would just go in and use my hot glue, wrap it a little bit, and then add some hot glue, some more hot glue, and wrap it a little bit more. <laughs> and then I did this until I had the whole top part in the sides of this lid all covered. And this, of course, is the lid that came off the jar. And yeah, so there it is, it's all done. So I'm just gonna cover it with hot glue and then I'm going to lay my jar right on top. That way when you look inside, you see the bottom of that twine or the twine part. And there it is, I just stuck a candle in it, but I think it's really pretty too. You have to let me know what you think about this one as well. Okay, and here is DIY number five. So I'm gonna start off with one of these jars from Dollar Tree. I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paints in the color Maze and Agave. I don't know why my camera's doing that. And then my Waverly chalk paint in the color White. I am gonna start off by using a stiff brush here and just pouncing on the Agave onto my jar. Um, I heard that if you do this, then you don't get the the streaks of a brush when you're brushing on glass, so I thought I'd give it a try. So once it was all dry, then I took my paintbrush and I painted over it. And it worked pretty good. The only problem I had was when I was drying it, I couldn't tell when it was dry or not, and I kept putting my fingers on it and rubbing paint off. Ugh, it was driving me nuts. But I finally got it all dry and fixed. And then I took the bottom of a paintbrush and I'm just dipping it into my maize chalk paint and I'm gonna go around and make little dots. And this is what I did on the birdhouse mobile. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a link to that video in my description box, but I did this on some of the birdhouses. I just love the way it came out and I thought, you know what, why not do this on a jar? So I'm just gonna go all the way around making little yellow dots, making sure that they're far enough apart so that when I add the white petals, they don't interfere with each other. So then I didn't like how my brush was working, so I took this little embossing tool and I'm just dipping it in my white and I'm going around each of the yellow dots and I make about, most of the time it was about six dots, but depending on how big the yellow dot was or the dots that your tool is making um, will kind of depend on how many dots around you're gonna make. So like uh, there was some that I had five dots around and then uh, most of them were six, some of them were seven. And then Mr. Oliver, Oliver finally got up this morning. <laughs> this was his birthday, so I let him sleep in. <laughs> and he came in to say hi to me, so I thought I'd give you a little shot of his cuteness. And <laughs> then I continued on with my flowers and went around and finished each one of them. And then once they were all dry, I just took some more twine and I'm gonna wrap it around and make a bow 
I just really like the way that looks when you have twine around the top. But if you don't like it, you don't have to add it. You could add ribbon or just do nothing at all. Then I took some of these daisies. These daisies I got from Hobby Lobby and then the colored ones I got from Dollar Tree and I'm just filling my base with them. Now the colored daisies, I did not like the how big the leaves were on them so I just ended up taking those off and there it is. I really love how this came out. You'll have to let me know what you think about this one as well. And which one was your favorite today? And would you be recreating any of them, even if they aren't your style? <laughs> so here is the final reveal. You guys, thank you so much for watching today. I tell you what, I struggled with this, but I pressed forward and oh, I finally got it done. I even, I had other plans but my hot glue gun quit working on me and I couldn't do what I was originally planning. So I had to kind of do something different. So anyways, here you go, guys. Make sure you check out the playlist. Watch everybody's videos to get a load of inspiration. And with all that, you guys, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your weekend. I will be back on Thursday with another video. And until then, have a blessed week and I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.